Hey Titans, this is Mordecai from GamerTitan.com. In this video, we're going to be going over changes that have recently been made to the RPG Quest system. Now, if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend watching my previous video where I go into more detail on how to actually set up and use the inner features of the RPG Quest system. This video will be covering the changes. There are quite a bit of them, and so I didn't want to make this video too long by repeating what was already said in that other video. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and, if you, by the way, if you are interested in downloading the RPG Quest system, simply look for RPG Quest system. This will probably be changed to version 2 by the time you search this. So I just searched for RPG Quest system by Mordecai. And if this is actually helpful to your project, I would definitely appreciate you giving it an honest review. So to actually see the changes, do a little demonstration here. I'm going to hit preview mode. Now, a lot of the changes that I've done to this were because of people asking me in comments in the previous YouTube video or sending me a message directly on Discord on how to do it for their project. I figured it'd be better just to update the entire template. That way, I kind of help everyone at the same time. So first off, prior to this update, the RPG Quest system actually wasn't using the required level. There was no way to disable a quest. It was either if a quest existed, it was always enabled. There are now two options that you can use to make a requirement of the quest. So first off, you can require by level, and this ties directly into the D&D template on, found on Core. All of the features of the RPG Quest system is set up to actually work with the D&D template right out of the box. So as you can see, Mather Cromwell on the right here has a white exclamation point above his head, which means that I do not meet the requirements to actually accept the quest. So if I try and interact with him, nothing happens. In the future, I'll probably make a dialog box that informs the player that they do not meet the requirements. I wanted to make sure that this update doesn't impact the quest data table in case you guys have already started working on your quests. I didn't want to force you guys to change your quest data to use these new features. And so your old quest data with this current version will still work out of the box. So the other thing that was requested quite a bit was being able to give other rewards based on quest. So previously the quest system would only provide coins and XP based on completion. Now you also have the option to give equipment. So for this particular quest, if I speak to the quest giver, we can see that now the reward is this chest icon, which means that this quest actually gives a piece of equipment. So find the lost sword, so I'll accept it. Lost sword just right here, I'll grab it. I turn the quest in, and before I do so, you'll notice that I have this dagger right now. The other thing I want to mention real quick is in the prior version, the quest complete text wasn't actually used. It was just a default quest complete dialogue for no matter which quest you completed. I had a lot of I had a lot of requests to be able to have a custom dialogue on quest complete. And this is already found in your quest data. If you're currently using the RPG quest system, this is already in there. You just need to make sure that you update your JSON to actually have this new dialogue. And I'll show you guys how to do that after this demonstration. So as a recap, I have this dagger right now. I've completed the quest. If I click on complete, you'll see that I now have the poison staff. And so you can actually give equipment directly to the player based on completion of the quest. And the other thing is, is it also sets up, it, it uses the D&D, Frameworks, same system that if you were to just simply purchase the item. So now you can see that it says that the poison staff has been purchased, which means that if I go over here and grab another piece of equipment real quick, I switch to the basic sword, I still have access to the poison staff and I can equip it. So just to show, if I leave real quick and join again, I should still have the poison staff equipped, which I do. 
So that is the demonstration. There is a few other things that are working. I haven't tested them, so if you decide that you actually want to use this functionality and you run into any problems, just let me know. But one of the requested features was being able to have a chain quest. And so what I mean by that is if there's a collection quest, for whatever reason, you wanted them to the player to have to collect like the sword as an example. But then the next you wanted the completion quest to be multiple items, but they had to complete the, the previous objective that is now working. So if I were to complete or sorry, copy and make the sword twice, there is this new objective now. And so what you would do is this would be objective zero, first objective, and then objective two would require objective one to be active. So, like I said, this hasn't been tested yet, so we'll just check real quick. And actually, both those swords are not showing because I've already completed that quest. So I deleted my player storage real quick, so it wiped out. All of my previous progress so now I should have the quest available to me again and it's not actually working let's double check make this one let's do I don't want to get hung up on this so if this actually isn't working then uh, I'll work on making it functional in the next version So I'll talk to the quest giver, accept the quest. So these are both showing, so it's not actually working. So I would just skip that for now. One thing, however, is if I complete the quest, there the other requested feature was the chain quests. So when I complete it, so if you could see right here, this other quest giver is, he has a quest, but I can't actually get it yet. So I have to complete this quest first. When I complete this quest now, I got my poison staff, but now this quest is actually available to me. And so we'll dive into that. So there's some new things in the quest giver that you'll need to make sure that you have. You most likely will want to start with quest giver right here. So the actual root template now needs to be updated. And so it has the uh, coin purse, which is the reward icon. If it is just reward type one, which we'll dive into here in a bit, it has the icon for the chest, which is icon two, reward type two, meaning they get a piece of equipment. And then this has quest and quest ideas still remains the same, but if in the actual quest giver itself, there's now a new boolean, requires quest complete. And so if you check this box right here, the quest complete ID, because this is quest ID 2, if it requires the previous quest to be completed, then you just put whatever quest ID needs to be completed to get the next one. So if you wanted, you can have a whole chain of quests. And then on the complete, on the uh, quest complete dialog, you would just be sure to say, you know, something like, thank you for your help. Be sure to talk to so and so, which is your next quest giver, to, you know, start the next part of the chain. Unfortunately, right now, one quest giver can't have multiple quests. I may work on making that a feature in the future, but currently each quest is assigned to each quest giver. And so the only way to do a chain series would be to have them go to quest giver one at a time and complete the quests. So we're gonna go over to the quest data because there is a, there's a few things that will need to be changed. Your quest data is all of your actual information for your quests. And so I have this tool here, this JSON editor online, I'll make it a bit bigger. So 
I believe this is linked right in the readme. If it's not, I'll make sure that it is. So there's a few things that you need to know. The reward type, if it's reward type one, it is coins and XP. If it's reward white reward type two, actually, if it's reward type one, you would want to make sure that this is an integer. So this is how many coins and XP they would get. Right now it gives them both, but I will show you how to change it in the code if you so desire. So if it is reward type one, just make sure that both of these are integers. If it's reward type two, then what you would do is you would paste in the MUID of whatever the piece of equipment is. And to find that in the RPG or the DD framework, is you would go into project content in core and your window may be in a different area. I think by default it's down at the bottom here, but you just want to go to project content, click on my templates, and then what you would do is you would find whatever piece of equipment. So say, this is an item say that you wanted to give them a this crossbow as an example you want to make sure that you find it has to be inside a project content you get the poison crossbow copy the muid and then you would paste it in reward value and in this editor make sure that it's green because that means it's a string. If it's red, that means that it's an integer, and that means that this wouldn't work. The other thing you need to do is after the colon here, delete poison crossbow. Just make sure it's just the MUID, not the name of the item as well. And then it would actually, this quest would then give that item as a reward. The other thing that was changed is this quest complete text. So this is the text that you get on completion. So be sure that you change this. The required level is now functional. I defaulted it to one, so all of your quests should work right out of the gate. But if you want a quest to require a specific level, then it's actually in the quest data. So you just put five here as an example. You, the uh, res name is the same. This is just kind of repeating myself from the last video, but be sure that you do like Q1, Q2, Q3 based on what quest it is. Resource required, that's all the same. So that's pretty much it. I go back to core here. Uh, let's see if there's anything I missed. Um, the other thing I want to mention is I will be uploading the stream. So I actually streamed the entire process of me going through and changing all this stuff. I did it live and I will be uploading that replay to YouTube shortly after this video. So if you're interested in seeing how I actually updated the entire RPG quest system, then be sure to check that out. Uh, one thing I mentioned is being able to change the reward. So if we go into server context, right underneath the readme, if you didn't change your hierarchy structure, there's this quest giver controller server. We click this and open it. This is where the information is about the reward type and so right now under reward type one it's player ad resource xp reward value so it does it for xp and coins so as an example if you wanted to say that you wanted to give them more xp than coins all you would do is you'd make a new variable that's like coins equals whatever this value is, and then your modifier. So say that you're giving them a thousand XP, but you wanted to give them one fifth in coins, you would divide it by five, but there's the potential that this is a float now. So what you need to do is wrap this in a core math.round. And then you just simply put the coin variable here. So how this is set up, I might go ahead and publish it with this in here as a demonstration, but it would give you whatever the value was in your database as XP, and then it would modify it and you'd only get one fifth in points. In terms of the equipment, I wouldn't modify anything under reward type two. This cross context caller, this is found in the framework by default. 
to give a shout out. Standard Combo is the one that made this cross context caller. It's an extremely helpful script. The reason it's used is because this quest giver controller is in a server context, which means that anything spawned from this context cannot be used. The client won't show up. So this cross this cross context caller, what it's doing is it is sending this function call to a normal context, a networked context or normal context script that is then firing this function from that script and it's a bit complicated um, if you're newer to core basically this allows it to give them the equipment and have the actual item working if this wasn't here you just tried to use this section of the code then the sword would be spawned but it would be spawned from the server and therefore on the client aka the player they wouldn't see that they had anything equipped so that's why this is this extra work right here. The other thing that you don't want to change, I actually just realized that this has a problem. So this will be fixed. I don't even worry about this part, but basically this is what sets the, the quest to complete. And so actually it wasn't actually completed the quest at the reward type one because it was under this if statement on if reward type two. So this is fixed now. Um, that's pretty much all I can think of. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below. If you have anything that you would like to be added to this framework, just let me know. And in the next update, I will try and get your changes in there. Uh, some things are a bit more complicated to add because I'm trying to make this as easy to use for a variety of different projects. And so if something is too specific, I probably won't add it because then it makes things more complicated for everyone else. Um, one other thing I want to mention, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the previous video, but this quest complete, when you actually complete the quest, what it's doing is it's getting os.time, which is the current time, and it's adding 43,000, which is 12 hours. And so what you can do is if you want to make any quest repeatable, you can check if you do OS time again, so it looked like if oh, if quest complete os.time. greater than or equal to quest complete, then whatever the quest that you wanted to reset would be, uh, you would set it to zero. But if you set anything to zero, as an example, quest ID one in the quest data is Q1. If you set that to zero in the resources, then the quest will be repeatable every 12 hours. Um, I know I don't have any example script on that, so that's something that I might add in a near update. But that's pretty much it for the video. Once again, be sure to check out the previous video as I kind of breeze past a lot of the basic setup on this system in this video. I just wanted to do a quick demonstration video of all the changes that were made to it. As always, please, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments down below. If you want more core related content, please hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you later, Titans.